do you need the media do you need you know a uh, uh, social media people to, to to enhance something so there is a there is a very big shift because the clubs are themselves are to have become the broadcast welcome to the sports biz show Today we have with us Mr. Arunav Chaudhary. He has worked for over 22 years in the sports and media industry with a special writing experience in having founded indianfootball.com and having his own blog arunfoot.com. Further, he's worked for TV and radio as a correspondent, commentator and football expert, along with consulting for various clubs, federations and brands. Today we'll be chatting with him on how to build multiple opportunities as an independent consultant and professional both in India and globally. Let's dive into it. Hello Arna, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thanks Ananya. I'm uh, given the situation I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm you know, I'm healthy and uh, I'm safe. So that's the most important thing at the moment, but yeah, I guess like most of the people around the world it's been a very weird 2020. No, I couldn't agree more, uh, but glad to know you're in good spirits and happy to have you on the podcast. Just to begin with, uh, I know that you completed your education in Germany. Uh, and you didn't complete it in a very uh, traditional sports path. It would be great to know how you sort of ingressed into sports um and why did you decide to make that switch i'm uh, born here in germany and uh, lived my first 10 years over here then had a 5 year stint in kolkata where my love and interest for indian football came about and you know um if a, if a 10 year old moves from germany to india one of my first questions to one of my uncles who used to live in germany before that as well was you know what about football and all and he took me to an uh, to an east bengal match and and you know we had a look and then you know that's where my love and interest for indian football grew i came back to germany with 15 finished my schooling then went to university and uh, during my university days i started a platform called indianfootball.com and that in 1998 and that is was uh, or is still is um india's oldest football website and through that i you know got more and more involved at the media side of things and we're talking about the late 90s early 2000s when the world was not so digitally connected as it is today and um i studied media i studied media production i i worked for radio i worked for television but again you know i've been always interested in the sport i think i have a basic understanding of football uh, and sports in general as well and through that more and more became things in sports management uh, sports marketing and you know working for the german fa for the german bundesliga for the all india football federation um you know having helped reliance in setting up of the indian super league managing mumbai city football club um doing projects here in europe around the world having worked for a club like bayern munich over many many years so the different different projects and i can go on and on and besides the media passion which is still something which i love that's why i do run my uh, blog arun arun foot where i do write things and um yeah and 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 try to uh, keep stay connected with the news and with the information flow which is there that's great what's occupying most of your day to day at this point it's a number of things uh, the biggest problem for someone like me is that last year in the year 2019 i traveled 251 days around the world Wow. And in uh, 2020 I did travel to India for a project for Borussia Dortmund in January. Um came back in early Feb and since then have been in my hometown literally. So I've done over the summer a lot of social work. Uh was involved in in in, in some stuff and and actually yeah I'm I'm helping a friend with his restaurant uh, as well and with this um, delivery business in in managing. So this is something totally different. doing a couple of projects where i'm, I'm advising um, um a football club on india matters um, and working on a project uh, hopefully which will kick off next year in the caribbean so you know i've got different things and then of course the blog some the good thing this season is that the indian super league is now uh, available on a stream here in europe formerly through a platform called yap tv so um yeah watching every day indian football as well which is fun that's wonderful we've established that you wear many hats uh and you've of course taken a plethora of roles ranging from media to consultancy to freelance writing how did you go about creating these multiple opportunities for yourself and how do you decide to balance it all how do you manage to balance it all i never created anything and most of the things actually happened so you know i came into into an age where 
uh, sports management, sports marketing did not exist. Um, take an example, in 2000, the Indian football team went on a trip to England. Indianfootball.com was already running for a couple of years. And then someone approached me from the organizer said, hey, can you help us with the media work? And then in connection with, with the organizers, with the All of India Football Federation, de facto became the first ever press officer of an Indian football team. It did not, that role didn't exist. So a lot of things have happened or... Bayern Munich approached me in the year 2005, said, hey, we're interested in the Indian market. We'd like to do something. We're considering some ideas. We're thinking of sending our B team to the IFA Shield. That happened by itself. The Bundesliga approach. So a lot of things have happened. Uh, uh, um, and, and balancing is, yes, um, I, I take the freedom um, of doing multiple projects rather than sticking to one. Um, because traveling around the world is something that I loved. I've seen parts of the world which I would have never seen in a normal job or even on my holidays or even India. Uh, I've seen parts of the Northeast, which I guess very few people have seen. You know, I've, I've seen the growth of, of, of sports in Mizoram from, from nothing to what it is today. So I've been very, very lucky on that. But again, in, in pandemic times, it's uh, not just of doing projects, um, doing a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of conversations, but I'm doing this thing for my friend with the restaurant because it gives me the opportunity to actually to go out and do some physical work and be amongst people. Otherwise, you'll be, you're just sitting indoors and, and, and doing your things. And that's, I think, very, very crucial for, for, for people like me who travel a lot. You know, and if I look at the whole situation, if I look at how you know, how the world has really changed over this year. Um, um, I have had to adopt as well and, 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 and you know, to one side stay healthy and, and to enjoy life as well, despite all of this. I've combined things which are really local over here. And I do also, I'm a co-founder of the local TV channel over here in Germany. So that work is also there. So yeah, trying to juggle with these jobs and hats that there are. Wow, that's wonderful to hear. Um, however, you did mention that you'd been working for your, at your blog for years. Um, and then, of course, you sort of created those inbound opportunities that came to you as someone who'd established himself in that space. Uh, and a lot of people, because of the low barriers to entry and the low cost to entry, are now sort of starting to create their own blogs and putting content out there. Um, I think the first most daunting step is to, of course, gather the courage to put your first piece out there. Uh, but then there's this whole gamut of emotions that one one goes through about getting the traction cross promoting reaching out to the right people how do you distribute your content how do you maybe eventually monetize it um when you were initially putting out this content how did you manage to create and build that traction if i look back at the year 1998 this is pre facebook whatsapp google you know we 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 had uh, if i'm not wrong three indian newspapers had a website in the year 1998 so um, the idea of IndianFootball.com was a, actually, again, by chance. Uh, um, I, from, I saw a friend of mine who created a website about himself. He was an HTML programmer. So I said, okay, let me create a website. I created a website about myself, created a website about my family, and, which wasn't a blog, which was a basic a static website. And then I realized I was following Indian football news and um, there was a gentleman called R. J. Krishnan, uh, um, who's based in, in California, who had created a sort of a tennis, uh, Indian tennis platform, where he was following how Indian tennis was doing. That was, of course, the prime days of Leander Pays and Maj Bhupati as, as a double spare and all. So that became sort of like, you know, sort of I thought, okay, maybe I can do something on football. And I don't know how, but on day three, day four, people started sending emails, hey, great, finally, there is an Indian football platform. And it started like this. I remember there was a gentleman called Paul Dimio out of the UK, a, a professor, a lecturer on, on, on sports, especially on football, who was researching on, 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 on Indian football. And it was quite interesting in the year 1999, Baiching Bhutia signed for Bury Football Club. Again, India went to England in 2000. So there was this traction that Indian football also had here in Europe. Um, and it, there was a lot of idealism involved in this. I think that is the main thing. If people look to monetize something like this, uh, be it a blog, be it a podcast, a video cast, whatever platform from the start, I think that is very, very difficult because it is a lot of hard work, a lot of legwork to get to that something or, and also to be accepted in the industry because now there are tons of people who are creating platforms, this, not everything. Um, they're also getting... Um, you know, clicks or hits, whatever, and they've got the numbers. But, you know, if I'm very honest, you know, I fear that the quality has really gone down because everybody is able to sort of broadcast themselves. 
if you look at um, currently, I take the example of the Indian Super League, and I've, I know a few friends who've worked in, in, in the IPL as well. The same thing is the clubs that themselves are, have become the broadcasters. Do you need the media? Do you need you know, uh, uh, social media people to, to, to enhance something? So there is, a, there is a very big shift because uh, I was following some discussions the other day uh, who are questioning is uh, clubs are releasing information about who is injured or who is, who is having a niggle when they want. Because no one is following and following the training session. So, you know, we are, these pandemic times have also changed how you interact and it's fast tracked the interaction levels of sporting organizations uh, or players. I mean, if I look at 99, 2000, the access to the players um, was very, very easy. I think that for newcomers today to try and access, let's say you want to access a Sunil Chetri. Sunil Chetri has his own social media. I mean, Sunil Chetri did interviews with uh, Virat Kohli, Shashi Tharoor and other people uh, in, you know, during the pandemic. You know, Sunil Chetri has become a sort of a, an informal journalist. So the question, and this is something, if I look back at Bieta Baichung Bhutia, Renidhi Singh, Sunil Chetri, all of these guys are rather friends. So when I interact with them, of course, yes, I do my interviews and other things. But again, it's on a different, different level. And also you have to distinguish what do you do as a friend? What do you also publish? Because I could write a book about stories um, that I would get all of them in trouble. But I would never do that because there's a trust factor involved. Then the question is also, what do you put out into the public domain? Correct. Absolutely. But th those are some really good points there. I mean, how do you today then differentiate yourself, differentiate the quality of the content that you're putting out, especially because maybe some of these athletes have become powerhouses themselves. And as you said, informal journalists who are putting out content and fans are rather going to flock to their channels for the authenticity, um, for the firsthand experience. Um, is there a way for other people to penetrate the market and is there a need at all? I think there is a need. I think that one thing which I see is lacking in India of today is the questioning of authorities, of clubs, franchises, sports persons. I think that is a big, big problem, which I feel is um, because, again, they are putting out their information. And, and if I look at uh, the ISL at, uh, as an example at the moment is... is you know, that, that, you know, I take an example as a legend like Robbie Fowler, who's become the coach of SEs Bengal. He's able to say anything about his Indian players and abuse them. He's like de facto abusing them. And no one is questioning that because it's, hey, it's Robbie Fowler. It's the legend. I remember the, on the day that Maradona died, George Best died 15 years ago. And we were with Bayern Munich in Kolkata. And I had a legend called Gerd Müller sitting next to me. And he said, listen, let me be careful of what, what I say about George Best because those two played together in Florida. And those two hated each other. You know, the, the, the legend of Man City, uh, Man United and the legend of Van Munich, when they played together, hated George Best tried to get him out of the club. He says, but I can't say what I actually think. So that's the problem as well in today's world, that you want to, you know, we're streamlining ourselves. We, we, we want to hear only positive stories and, 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 and nice stories. Or we also create stars too early. And that's the other problem that, you don't allow a sports person to develop himself. You, you know, we made a massive story about the under 17 World Cup uh, uh, in 2017. And three years later, most of the boys are not even playing in the Indian Super League. A lot of them are player 21, player 22 in the squads or have moved down to the I-League. So that is a massive problem that we have in this world of how do you broadcast? What do you broadcast? What do you say? Because theoretically, anyone can say anything. Um, and if I had more time... To, to spend on media, I think I would do a one or the other different platforms. But again, um, I have to be also realistic because I travel uh, normally so much that I, I cannot do something on a very, very regular basis. So the blog is something for fun. I do also have to be very honest that I do pub publish certain press releases from clubs here or there or, or this and that. Uh, but again, I do try and put out my opinion uh, uh, as well. Um, and and I take I take an example uh, um, I, I take a very good example is that I've, I've been writing an article uh, regarding questioning should ISL coaches be playing Indian players in the interest of the Indian national team and then the end answer to me is no because they are playing to win the tournament every coach is winning to play with his team to win the tournament so he'll play the best players if the Indian players are not the best sadly they're on the bench or on outside so. That is something which is very, very crucial, I think. Just shifting gears a little bit, um, you've obviously, you know, strategically advised multiple teams. Uh, you've been part of multiple projects in the space of football. Uh, and I'm sure relationships 
as you rightly mentioned, even before this, have played a huge role um, in maintaining those positions as an entrepreneur and a professional, uh, even someone who's freelanced, how do you sort of initiate and maintain those relationships without sort of seeming like you're hustling somebody? Um, how do you make that happen? How do you maintain a consistent relationship in an organic way? It depends on who that relationship is with. A lot of people have become friends over the years. So some people you have on and off contacts, you speak, uh, you exchange WhatsApp messages or emails. Uh, there are other people where you speak maybe once, you know, there are certain people I've only spoken once this year and it will not change in, in, in the last few days of the year. But again, when you speak again, you know directly that connect is there. So there are different ways and different levels of people. Um, I never run after people regarding projects, to be very honest. I think, um, I've, again, I've been very lucky that some of the other projects have fallen on, in my lap, um, that, that people realize the value of having someone like me who is I think a little out of the box because uh, if, if you would go from, uh, at least in a football field, go through all areas, uh, there is not an area which I've not, you know, done. And, and so, so, so that way, you know, I, I bring a holistic approach. I bring a, a, a fulsome approach to, to, to the whole thing. And um, when it especially comes to things in India, I, I do come, I do understand the local market on one side, but I do understand what works, especially in a sort of developed sporting ecosystem, sporting world, which is Europe and especially here in Germany. And, and I feel that that is something which is, um, which is very crucial uh, and which distinguishes me from the rest. I know that a lot of people go to study abroad and then do their degrees. No, I'm born here. So I, I, I am on one side German and I'm on the other side, I am Indian. So, so I think that is an, a value add and that makes me very unique uh, in this sporting field and that you know, helps me in, in, in doing and finding projects. Very well said. Uh, now you have also worked with teams in the Bundesliga, the Caribbean. Uh, you've led a premier team, the Mumbai City FC um, in, of the ISL as their CO, COO. How would you differentiate and describe your experiences working for an Indian football property and foreign football properties? Mumbai City is uh, very special to me and because I was involved in creating the franchise. So I can, you know, it's, it's like IndianFootball.com in the past, I would say Indian foot, um, Mumbai City FC is, is, uh, is, is one of my babies. And uh, um, if I see today's structure, um, uh, a lot of people are still there who were initially there in 2014. Um, Man City buying into the club, you know, that was an idea that I had uh, six years ago. And everybody called me, even Man City called it crazy. You know, no one, you know, a lot of people, most of the people didn't uh, think that it was realistic. Um, you know, and, you know, uh, five and a half years later, it really happened. So I know that maybe I was on, on certain fronts, I am a little ahead of my time. Uh, some people will call me crazy, others will call me a visionary, whatever they want to. Um, you know, I, I shouldn't judge myself, but. Uh, when it, especially when it comes to Indian football, I think that you have to take a very, um, yeah, out of the box view, look from the outside, look what is right, look what is wrong, and then understand and take the steps. And the thing is, you, the problem in India is that you want to change things immediately. And in sports, it doesn't happen. You need time. You need a decade. You maybe need a two decades, three decades to develop. And I think, you know, you live in Japan, you know, the Japanese are the prime model for that. If I look at the Asian model, if I look at the J League, not only J League, but sports in general, uh, what they've done, brilliant, um, you know, and, and, and they've worked on it. And I think that is something that that focused work, we get carried away with the professional game. Um, initially, I remember in the discussions also the Reliance, the IPL was the model, sort of the pre merging the Premier League with the IPL will create the ISL. That doesn't work because football is a sport which is very unique in itself. It's the only so-called global game where leagues around the world are, are run in one system. And, and that is something that I've, I've learned. Um, um, and after six months also, I myself realized, I myself resigned uh, from Mumbai City FC because I realized in this ecosystem, it's going to be difficult for someone like me to be able to put his ideas to work. It is funny that in year two, year three, I saw a lot of the things that I had in mind, put, up, put on paper, were implemented. But at the time when I was there, a lot of people said, no, this is not happening. That is not happening. You can't do this. You can't do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe it's my arrogance, but I say I do understand football to a certain extent, maybe more than other people. And if I've got an approach, and I can say that, it's, it's, it's you know, people have said it. I was sitting on the draft. And I think I, I, I put the best Indian squad together. So I can say that, right? Again, the coach has to make it work, but I put him in a squad together to say, hey, listen, this, this can work, this can work. 
should work. And we were favorites in season one. Sadly, you know, we had a lot of issues uh, around Nicolas Enelka with joining the club. We, he was banned by the Premier League. Theoretically, he was suspended. Was he not? And, you know, all those things. We had a bad start in the opener in Kolkata. And, and uh, you know, the rest of the journey was always trying to catch up when we never did. And that, those, but I will never want to miss those three months. Those were the, you know, you know I, the most intense three, four months of my life. And like you said, today, a lot of foreign properties are sort of investing into Indian sports, Indian football, especially uh, creating multiple partnerships, multiple opportunities. What is the Indian sports football ecosystem USP that they're really tapping into or should tap into rather? The first USP is the size of India and its population, its young population. I think that is the, the biggest USP that India has. India is a developing economy, but the problem is, in my opinion, at least that um, if you see the growth of cricket and the growth of IPL over the last decade plus since it came to the scene, it literally has exploded. I mean, the IPL has become more important than the Indian cricket team, you know, whatever people say. But de facto, you know, and I'm, I'm not a cricket expert, but as from a sports manager, sports marketing standpoint, I feel that that, that cricket has become much more important. And um, But you also see um, when you come to talk about football, there's much more investment into Japan, into China, into Korea, even into uh, Southeast Asia, into the Middle East. Um, India is a little bit of a late starter and the biggest investment has come from the City Football Group uh, in buying into Mumbai City. And, you know, they've got the odd partnerships here and there. Atletico Madrid didn't work out because the other problem that, that Indian football or Indian sports in general has, that it's not profitable. The biggest problem is that if you're spending money, um, you cannot raise, except for cricket, you cannot raise enough money to cover your costs. And I think that as long as that doesn't change, um, it becomes very difficult for other sports outside of cricket to be commercially viable. And as long as that viability is not there, uh, you will depend on um, yeah, the large corporates or rich business people to, who either have an interest in the sport or think they can utilize the sport for something of their value. Um, that's the only reason that people then will invest. Right. That's correctly said. But do you think there's a way around that viability or to create a better culture where fans eventually can be monetized? Um, is Are we going the right way in, in doing that? Or are we still sort of uh, being impatient with some of, the, some of those activations and not, not tapping into the fans correctly? I think the problem is, uh, the biggest problem is, um, from an Indian Super League perspective, is that your host broadcaster is a stakeholder in the league, uh, which in 2013 made a lot of sense to bring Star Sports on board, that IMG Reliance said, we will bring Star Sports on board, we will ensure... World Cup coverage, brilliant. And and from day one till now, uh, the coverage by Star Sports of the Indian Super League is is comparable to Premier League, Bundesliga, whatever. So so that is a added bonus. But Star is not paying for the rights, and the rights fees, even the example of the IPL shows it, or Indian cricket shows it, that is what made it profitable. Now on the fan perspective, I think the Indian fan to monetize the Indian fan is is difficult because the question is. How much is the Indian fan willing to spend? Now, an Indian fan is willing to spend 3,000, 5,000 rupees on an original jersey of, of, of European football club or national team or NBA or whatever. Are they willing to do spend that same money on an IPL team, on ISL team? Everyone has sort of become local, right? Why are the big corporate uh, 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 sports where brands sort of rather pulling out than rather being a part of the Indian ecosystem? Um, I think the Indian cricket team um, you know, you, you've replaced Nike with a brand which I don't even know. Uh, um, um, it's happened in football again. Nike was replaced by 656, who are now a little bigger. But again, it's, it's a local a startup brand. Um, I see a lot of other brands who are, who are around. And, and you don't, where are the Nikes, the Adidas and the Pumas? Okay, Puma at least has in the Indian Super League. Uh, Bangalore FC and Mumbai City FC is getting partners, but the others have been kept by, by, by local brands. And that's, I think, a very big problem because these smaller local Indian brands, of course, don't have showrooms. So, you know, in Bangalore, I know that, that Puma sells Bangalore FC jerseys in their shops. And uh, it was easier in the past to get a Nike jersey here in Europe than in an Indian, Indian store. At, at, the, at the flagship store at, at Oxford Circus in London, the Indian jersey has always been on sale while it was not in Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata or wherever. So, you know, there's a lot of these factors which come in and, and, and 
there's this belief amongst the big uh, kit ma- kitwear makers and the sports sports brands that India is not a market where you sell volume. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like accessibility and experience has always sort of been lacking and you touched upon that. This is a segment which is a bit of a rapid fire. Um, I yeah. sort of want to put out three pertinent questions and get your answers on those. Number one, what books would you recommend to become a general, to become a better leader or manager in general? Three, right? Up to you. You could go more than three as well. See, my biggest problem in today's world is that I, I, I've gone off the books and I, 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 I hang around on the internet too often to read. So, so for me, it's rather reading short essays uh, or other things. So if I look at how to be successful from a sporting world, I, I like, for example, Professor Simon Chadwick, you know, what, what he's written. Um, there's a lot of things which I find very interesting. There are, of course, stories um, um, which, which, which make gr- good reading. Um, um, who was, what was the last thing I read? Uh, it was sort of the Jeff Bezos uh, story. I was I was reading a lot about Jeff Bezos, how he started again. But that's a typical American garage story, uh, and and you know it's, it's it, and become the most influential, most richest guy in the world. Three skills you'd recommend for a better career in the Indian sports ecosystem. Patience, <laughs> to start off with. Um, I would say tenacity. I think it's very very important uh, that you recognize and realize is that your first approach might not be successful. Also, you want your 10th, not your 15th. Um, I think that's very, very important that you stick to it. Um, Also realize that if you're working under people who you might not think who are the most intelligent and the knowledgeable, get your job done first, show yourself. I think that's very important. And hard work. You know, nothing replaces hard work and and understanding things um, and and understanding from, a. I say from a practice, that's the German in me, from a practical standpoint only then you can I, I feel at least you'll be not only that you're successful but you'll be more successful and there is no one path to success very well said and the last question of this segment is one word to describe the indian sports ecosystem developing i All think right. that's the sad part but it's not finished yet it's still in a development process absolutely that makes sense um, lastly, any parting advice for those looking to enter the Indian football ecosystem um, or even the football ecosystem uh, globally, especially for those sort of looking to take on um, the role of a consultant or a writer like yourself or media expert like yourself? I think for, for writers, it's relatively easy is if you, you know, maybe start writing using the net. Um, it doesn't have to be directly a blog. You can publish it on your own Facebook or on your LinkedIn or whatever. So, you know, there are means and ways of how you could do it. I think that is very, very crucial that you start writing and then look at platforms where you can um, gain bigger uh, readership and also potential traction. I think that is very important. Uh, from a consultant, from a, from a, from a sports strategist standpoint, um, looking internationally in times of pandemic is unrealistic to me, to be very honest. I think if you're coming from India with an Indian passport, even with a foreign degree, um, there are a lot of people without jobs at the moment, also in the sports industry and, you know, with people with experience. So that that's one. And I would also say um, that you need to be able um, to, to, to have practical experiences. Very often you have people who say, listen, I've done my MBA, I've done this, I've done that. But then, you know, when you when it gets to the practical work, um, there is no experience. If you can do internships uh, or even, you know, the leagues are all very short, you know, get get an experience, not one, not two, not three, maybe even use a year and try and, you know, do different different leagues and understand, hey, which which league, which sports, you know, what what do I want to do and and work hard. I think that is the thing that the advice that I would give. Thank you for sharing that. That brings me to the end of my questions, but um, I learned so much just hearing you speak about your journey, your career trajectory. Thanks, Ananya, for having me. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. At The Sports Biz Show, the aim is to get you the best interviews, trends, and tips from the world of sports business. It will be really helpful if you could subscribe and rate the podcast. This would go a long way in helping the show get discovered and add value to more sports biz enthusiasts and professionals like yourself. Please feel free to connect on LinkedIn or Instagram. Links will be in the description. Thank you and until next time, keep the Josh high.